Hey gang, today we're reviewing the Spider-K Spidey Chef. Look at it. What a different looking knife, if I do say so myself. Uh, this knife here is interesting because it is a uh, Schlich design, uh, who does the Schlich buoy and the um, the Techno as well. So it does some, you know, pretty pretty cool, um, you know, very sort of, he's got his he got his things that he does. He likes obviously the titanium frame locks. He likes his unusual sort of shapes and handles and profiles and things. Very, very, a bit like Jens Anso or a bit like, um, you know, Lucas Burnley or um, a bit like uh, Ken Onion. Got his own very much, you can almost tell a Schleich knife just by looking at it. But anyway, so it's one of his blades. This one is, you know, it's it's intention, it's, it's gimmick, is it's um, the food prep spider coat. Which, you know, it gets that moniker from having a very much belly heavy blade, from having a handle where your knuckles are pretty much in line with the, you know, apex of the, you know, the swoop there sort of thing. So you can chopping board about as good as any other sort of knife you can, you know, you can think of. And also it's got the steel that never rusts and also actually holds an edge, which is something, definitely something. So let's look at the knife, let's talk about what I like and what I don't like about the knife and uh, overall we'll make a recommendation. I'm not going to beat around the bush, this could be my favourite Spyderco. So let's get into the um, reasons why. First of all, look at the blade. The blade is a super practical, non-alarming, but still large blade. Let's get some size comparisons going. Let's compare this to the Benchmade 940 for a start. So it's a, it's in that three, three point two five to three point five inch, you know, uh, measure there. It's 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 a larger knife. It just doesn't seem or look like a larger knife because it's got that almost pingo esque, um, like the Spyderco pingo. It's got that sort of almost tipless look to it, although it still does have a tip. It's just very subtly designed to look non-threatening, but also be a real performer. It's really wide. It's obviously fully flat ground and it slices like nothing else I've used so far. It is it's it is truly slice, slices like a chef's knife. It is a great little blade. And it's just really, really handy to use on pretty much anything. It's got a constant belly. There isn't really any flats here apart from maybe this part here. You could do your, you know, shaving away cuts, no problems at all. Just a matter of really just learning a different angle. You know, usually you, you attack things like this with knives because the, um, the first couple of inches of the blade is like flat like that, so you can just grab it and you just need to alter your grip a bit. But it's just, it's a different blade and so it makes it really um, eye-catching and unique, as well as being super functional, super practical. It's one of the best knife blades I've used in terms of actually using the blade. Because the tip, whilst it looks sort of like it's not quite there, it is definitely there. It's definitely a sharp tip. You can pierce and pry and poke with that tip with no worries at all. Um, you get a nice flat spine so you don't have any of the humping or arching which makes it feel more and more like a cook's knife again um, comfy like how the bench made's comfy um, so some knives don't have that say the Spyderco Endura where your thumb is forced up onto this hump so that's about as far as it goes whereas with this one you can get it all the way down here if you like no problems at all nothing stopping you there's no jimping nothing that unnecessary it is really just a different beast altogether so the blade is shaped and ground and very very interesting and very very good at being a blade plus it's got one of the best knife steels I've used in it so far yes in terms of sheer edge retention it's definitely not maximum not maximum at all it's um you know it's held about the same like the time as s35 vn in my testing so what if you're not familiar with my knife testing videos I'll add the link to this one up here in the um here wherever it is in the cards um this held about as long as your base level um, powder steel. So I think it is a powder steel again, but it's more nitrogen based. Less, very, very little carbon in it at all. And uh, unlike, unlike other nitrogen based steels, it holds for a proper length of time. Uh, I've used it against rope and food and cardboard, and I haven't noticed any chipping. It's just a good performing blade steel with the added bonus of being very difficult to stain. So what I did to test the stainlessness of this knife is that I cut an orange, and I just left the knife on the table with like the orange cut fresh from the, like fresh just covered in acid and I left it there for about four hours and when I came back I wiped it off with a wet cloth and there is and this isn't even a mirror polish finish or anything like that. it's actually just kind of machine finished 
um, nothing at all. So I just wiped it straight off and it was absolutely fine. Um, the worst thing I've done to this blade finish is when I workshopped it for, the, for my test, because as I say, those tests are the same uh, edge every time. It workshops the full scratches along here, which is a bit of a bummer, but I'm actually using this blade, so I don't really care how it looks. Anyway, great steel on a great blade. Um, one of the best blade steel blade combinations I've ever had. Um, really, really highly recommend it. The only thing you might struggle with is sharpening it if you're not used to sharpening constant sweeping blades. Uh, on the Tormek, it's been a bit of a... Um, bit of a learning curve because just trying to find the right way to clamp it, I end up clamping it about there and just, you know, the whole time I'm kind of suspending my wrist in the air. It's different, but it's definitely doable. Um, okay, so that's the blade. The blade is about as good as you could get, in my opinion. I love it. Uh, the handle. Let's look at the handle. The handle is this angular, weird, swoopy, jagged sort of affair that looks like it might actually be a little bit just odd or uncomfortable in the hand, but in my hand, I find it really, really good. So I love the blade and I love the handle. As you're seeing, there isn't really much that I'm going to have a problem with on this knife. I'll get to stuff later on, I guess. But so the handle, for a start, when the knife's closed, it just looks, in my opinion, you might you're going to think this is hideous or awesome, and that's fine either way. I can totally see why, but I love the look of it. They've got almost a complete sheer flat edge there. But then the tip folds down and continues into this handle around here, and you've got edge, edge, edge. It's just cool. It's this combination of harsh, straight lines, but then when you open it, real. So the top is straight lines, the bottom is smooth swoop. It's just so damn cool. And in the hand, it translates really, really well. The natural grip is just excellent. Uh, in my cut test, where I cut, you know, over and over again, repetitive task. It did absolutely fine, really, really comfy in the hand, despite being a bit more on the boxy side. Contoured titanium handles like the Kaiser, these ain't, but in terms of actually being in the hand, it's almost up there with the Kaiser. And in fact, I actually prefer it because um, the uh, handles are just a little bit longer and a little bit less crampy. The flippers always make me feel like I'm cramping my hand up to try and push up against it. This one here, although it does have somewhat of a guard here, bit longer in the handle, so really, really nice. All my fingers fit on there. Nothing unusual poking me. Wire clips low profile, of course. Really, really well done there, of course, too. So the handle is great. Um, in terms of lockup and fit and finish, it's a Tai Chung Spyderco, so it's got all that excellent fit and finish that we all know and enjoy from the Tai Chung factory. Locks up to about, you know, 50%, maybe 60%, um, and it's, you yeah, just fine. It's on bronze phosphor washers, so it's smooth without being crazy drop shutty. You know, uh, it's not like a crazy drop shut smooth ball bearing type knife. It's just a working, you can flip it out, um, sort of folding knife, no problems at all. Um, the pocket clip is another thing I absolutely love about it. It's got the good wi uh, wire Spyderco clip that is deep carry as opposed to the one that is not, say on this Mannix here, um, and it's the good sort of stiffer one. So there isn't really much side-to-side -side play. It is just a bit of sprung wire, so you can play with it slightly, but it's in there solidly. Um, this knife carries really well in the pocket. You put it in your pocket, it steers everything away from everything else. Your hand, you can still fit a mobile phone in here because this is quite narrow here. Um, it'll sort of sit about here. It's not the narrowest spider in the world, but because they've really inset that um, hole, they haven't had to make it like this and huge and puck shaped like the Manix 2 for example. So you do save a fair bit of space sideways. Yeah, it's no Benchmade 940, um, you know, but it's somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle at the very least. So it's still nice and slim for a Spyderco, which is, I know, a bit of a qualifier, but still very, very nicely done and very, very nicely designed in my opinion. Carries just great. It's nice and thin too. So let's look at another thin knife. Let's look at the Endura. It's about as thin, if not a little bit thinner than the Endura. So very, very thin. It's a light knife as well. It's titanium and uh, steel. So there's nothing really too heavy on it. It's 100 grams. So you know, it's a little bit heavier than say your ultra light knives like your Manix 2 and your Endura's. So the Endura is about 77 grams, the Manix 2 is about 78 grams, whatever, so extra 20 grams, but I mean, it's titanium, so titanium is never going to be as light as plastic now, is it? But still, a very lightweight, well-carrying knife indeed. What don't I like about it? There isn't much I don't like about this knife, but there is something you should be aware of with this knife. 
this isn't the nicest opening uh, Spyderco that you can get, mainly because they've chosen that, they've chosen to have it be thinner, therefore having to open it in a bit of a different way. So you can't just flick up like you would in the Spyderco because obviously your thumb hits this corner here. So you kind of have to grab just here, let's zoom in, let's zoom in. So you have to put your thumb just there and then launch outwards. So it's, it's, a, it's a knack, but it's a knack you need to get used to and I'm not going to lie to you and say that it flicks as well as any other sort of line locking spider curve because it's probably on the poorer side in terms of actually deploying it for fun, sitting, fiddling with it on your couch, um, all that sort of business that we all do. It's There's a knack to it that once you get it doesn't bother you too much but it isn't as amazing. It's a bit like how, remember the spider coefficient? I reviewed that and that had another catch there which you know, it was always catching my thumb as it rolled out. This one's not as bad because you can get around it. I couldn't get around it with the Efficient. It was a little bit too stiff or something. This one's got a fluid enough pivot that it does sort of launch out just fine. But it's um, definitely something I need to tell you about because it's not its not a fiddler's dream. It's, you know, it's a fiddler's, it is enjoying for a fiddler. But <laughs> fiddler. It's enjoying, uh, enjoyable, uh, enjoyable, but it's not amazing. So it's nowhere near your your bench made. It's not, wee, this is fun. It's not like that all day. Nothing cool like that. Um, about as about up there with some of your lockback kind of spider codes in terms of being, you know, you, you can do it, but it's not, it's not the specialty of the knife for sure. But overall, I still think this is a great collectible knife and also a great user knife. This is probably my favorite spider code knife I've had. Um, it's just unusual enough to make it stand out in my collection, but it's definitely practical enough due to having the awesome steel, the awesome ergonomics, the great blade shape, and just the sheer um, oddness of it, which just really makes me keep coming back to it. I've really had a hard time. Okay, I got a Sebenza. This is a 550 Australian dollar knife. I got a Sebenza at the same time as I got this knife, and I've had difficulty getting the Sebenza in my pocket because this one wants to be there instead. And that's just how it is. It's very, very interesting. Um, it's, you know, obviously not quite at this level in terms of construction, but it's really well constructed, really well designed. So different, but yet um, it works. It's not different just to be different and to be odd and have that as its main point. All of its differences are to make it perform better. So really, really enjoyable knife to use, really enjoyable knife to carry. Uh, you'll pay a little bit for this knife. You'll probably pay about $270 for it, but then, hey, it's got a crazy steel that just doesn't make sense in terms of you know, lasting as long as this stuff, but staining, you know, being about twice as stainless. Um, and he's got a titanium frame like hands, but it's got an interesting design. It does everything really, really well. And I think the money is definitely uh, worthwhile being spent in this one. Um, these expensive knives, I won't always say they're an insta buy, and this one probably still isn't an insta buy because it's just odd looking, and you're gonna, you could just well, you could as well, you could just as well think it's hideous. No matter how good that is in my hand, I'm not carrying something so hideous, and that's completely fine. But if it looks, if you think this looks good, and you're just wondering how it actually uses and carries and cuts, then rest assured, it's one of the best ones. So the Spider Coast Spidey Chef. Um, Definitely um, kicking goals with this one, Mr. Schleesh. And thanks very much for watching, dudes. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Sorry, before I finished, there was one thing I needed to mention as well. This would be an amazing, and I, I didn't think of it because I'm not one, but if you're a hunter, this could very well be one of the best folding hunting knives going. There's a lot going for this in terms of it's got obviously the really highly stainless blade. It doesn't have the crazy catchy tip. It's got awesome belly. It's got extra little features here for holding the blade in that cleaning grip. So cleaning out an animal or whatever, really, really good. And then I know it's a frame lock, which isn't your standard, you know, your traditional type of hunting folder, but look, it's got completely see-through construction. So you can just blast the blood out of this really, really easily. And to be honest, this is a dishwasher, um, you know, dishwasher liquid cleaning knife because it's stainless. It's titanium, which isn't going to stain, and the steel, which isn't going to stain. So you can just soak this in your warm dishwashing water when you get home, and you'll be completely fine. The washers in it aren't bearings, so very, very. Um, I haven't taken this down, but very simple, sort of nothing to get bound up and rubbish with. So I just thought I would definitely bring this up as definitely another um, point of use for this one. If you're after a folding hunting knife. Um, 
really, really good option, this one here, for sure. Sorry, just to bring that up, I just thought I would because it's definitely another reason why this is a great all-around user knife. Thanks for watching, dudes. See ya.